Ah, got you, bastard. Oh. Hello. I guess it's that time of year again. That time of year where endless amounts of YouTube Black Friday videos, countless holiday shopping, endless amounts of holiday commercials, and kids getting the latest fads as gifts. But even with that, I still enjoy the togetherness with friends and family that this holiday brings out in all of us and the gifts that come along with it. But what if you're looking for a gift that you want to make personally, something special, something cool, something that'll tell your kids that my generation was better. How about using the good old Raspberry Pi to make your own classic gaming system? Oh, that's not what I meant. Well, actually one is more tasty. It's actually pretty good. I wonder if that someone actually made this uh, joke already. Now if you don't know, the Raspberry Pi is essentially a small computer built with the portability and simplicity for your own do-it-yourself projects. Many people use it for a variety of things like a clock, a digital frame, and even speakers, which I did in my first video for this channel. But one of the most popular projects out there is performing game emulation on this little doohickey. Over the past several years, the Raspberry Pi itself has been getting numerous revisions, thus making the hardware more advanced and able to accomplish a lot more things, including performance boosts. This makes it possible to run advanced game systems using this little miracle. Thanks to this, multi-system emulators were developed to make classic gaming more accessible on a simple machine. So consider this an easy gift-making tutorial on giving your kids a look into the past and making that father of the year cup worth your wife's time. So in order to make our portable classic system, we first need our Raspberry Pi. I chose the latest one since it can perform better on systems like the N64 and the PlayStation 1. Also I recommend a case because of dust and whatnot. A micro SD card with at least 4 to 8 gigs to store our emulation software, a USB drive for our games, a micro USB power supply, which is pretty common if you ever got an Android phone or tablet, an HDMI cable so we can see the picture on our TV, a USB keyboard to configure what we need, and of course a controller. For this I have an Xbox 360 controller with a wireless adapter. If you have a PS3 controller, you need the Bluetooth adapter and a USB cable. More than likely, you should already have some of these things around the house. But if you don't, they're pretty cheap if you just go down the street to your Walmart or store in their electronic section. They're pretty cheap nowadays. But now let's get to work reliving your childhood memories and not e First, we need to set up our micro SD card to hold the emulation software. In this case, we'll use Recallbox, a fantastic front end, to access our games. Click the link on the screen or in the description below to download the zip file. We'll also be needing the program SD Formatter, which you can also find on the screen or down below as well. Once you downloaded both programs, open SD Formatter and select the drive letter which your micro SD card is under. Then click Format. It should just take a couple seconds. Once that's done, open the zip file and open our micro SD card. In this zip file, copy the files over directly to this SD card. Now unhook your micro SD card and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. Here's the fun part. Connect the HDMI cable into your TV and select the right input. There should be a button on your remote to switch between inputs on your TV. Connect the keyboard, USB drive, and the controller you're going to use. The adapter for the 360 controller or the Bluetooth adapter and USB cable for your PS3 controller. And lastly, it's time to power up a Raspberry Pi. Wait, how did that get there? I meant this one. This one, yes. But once you do that, a colorful screen should appear, meaning it's been installed correctly. Just wait for everything to be configured, and the recall box main screen should be there. But we're not done yet. It's time to configure it and add some games. 
Now the first thing we have to do is to put some games on our recall box, and that's what we're going to do on our USB drive. Now there are a lot of ways to configure Recallbox remotely on a network or from another computer, but I chose this method since it's the easiest and fastest method for our games to run smoothly. Using our keyboard to navigate, go to our menu, system settings, and storage device. Switch it to our USB drive, back, and our system will reboot. Now if we go back to the same menu, it'll show that our USB drive has been configured. Now turn off the recall box by unplugging it. On our computer, plug in our USB drive and you'll see a folder called recall box inside. Click on it and you should see a whole bunch of created folders. Click on ROMs and there should be folders for every system supported by recall box. And I mean a lot of game systems. So now all we have to do is just drag our ROMs to the rightful folder depending on what system the game is on. Now again, I can't tell you where to download these ROMs. Just Google it. I don't want to get sued by the wrong people. Alright, now let's do some examples. Earthbound, this is a good game. Yeah, this this is really good. Put it in your SNES folder since it's a Super Nintendo game. Spyro, that's that's always a classic. I I love Spyro. Ooh, Golden Sun. Underrated classic in my opinion. So once that's done, unplug the USB drive and plug it back into our Raspberry Pi. And the game should appear under each of the appropriate menus. Beautiful menus. Just beautiful. Now is to configure our controllers, which can be kind of tricky, but I'll try to explain it as simply as I can. For Xbox 360 controllers, just like syncing your controller with the 360 itself, press the button down on the adapter and the tiny button on the top of the 360 controller until you see the lights change. Give it a sec, but you should be able to control the menu. For PS3 controllers, make sure your Bluetooth wireless receiver is hooked up. Plug in the PS3 controller into the Raspberry Pi by using the USB cable. Press the home button and wait around 10 seconds. Unplug it and press the home button again. Wait a second, you should be able to move it around. Even if the system powers off when you press the home buttons on those said controllers, you should be able to move around the menus accordingly. Now for the controller configurations. They have defaults already set up, so you should be able to play your games but just in case you have third-party controllers of some kind, we're going to manually configure our controllers. Using the keyboard, go to the main menu and controller settings. Then configure a controller. Hit OK. Then hold down a button until the controller name pops up. Configure the buttons in order. Once you get to the hotkey, select the home button as it's mapping which should be default on the 360 and PS3 controllers. But once that's done, hit OK and go back to the main menu. Now let's test some games. As you can see, Earthbound is running smoothly and testing shows that Spyro is pretty smooth on the Raspberry Pi 3, making all other systems below able to turn out some smooth performance. As for Golden Sun, what do you expect? It's beautiful. One last thing to note is that if you want to quit and go back to the main menu or do special commands in general, here's a chart of all the commands you can do depending on the controllers you selected when mapping out our controls. I'll put a link down below as well as a manual for the entire documentation on this wonderful piece of software in case questions arise. But other than that, you should be all set for a wonderful portable gaming system to give to your kids or your favorite man children in your life this holiday season. Now go get a job and stop eating that pie, man-child! Hello, and thank you for subscribing to my channel. I hope you enjoy this video on making a portable Raspberry Pi thingy. If you want to see more videos in the future, like and share these videos so I can continue making cool things.